Now, when you pull up your test, it should look just like the same order that I have. If that's not the case, let me know and we'll I'll go a little bit slower and we'll find the right question, you know, find the right question for you or I'll let you scroll through it. Let me just pull up my chat while we're going here in case you guys have a question or anything. Okay, so this is the unit four test and I'm going to focus on the ones that people miss the most. Um, if you still have questions after this, let me know. But as I said, our, our test on Thursday, this Thursday, the unit five test, it will count as your unit five test, but it, it covers unit three, four, and five. It's cumulative, all right? So we just said that for anybody who was a little bit late coming in today, um, our test on Thursday covers units three, four, and five. So all of our circle units, it will be all multiple choice. So the problems that I'm gonna talk about that you probably may have missed, like putting decimal answers for all of the exact answer problems, that was kind of the biggest thing that happened. Um, that shouldn't happen on this coming test because they won't, you know, you won't have that option to have a decimal answer, right? It'll give it to you as, as certain um, answer choices. To review, we talked about that the circle review uh, worksheets are out there already on unit five, we have part one, part two, and the classwork five, six, that I'll open up later today, and it will be on Go Formative. It does count for a classwork grade. That covers all three units. It's pretty basic. So if you're struggling with that classwork, you really need to go back and watch some of the videos that I have out there on YouTube. Um, ask questions in class tomorrow, and on Wednesday, we're gonna review both days. And then um, you do have your Delta Math homework for tonight as well. So let's go ahead and we'll work several of these problems. Okay, so on the directions on the test, this is the biggest thing that people miss was just putting things in the wrong form. So you're supposed to leave all of your answers an ex as an exact answer. So an exact answer, um, unless it tells you to round, right? So an exact answer, remember that means you, you leave your answer in terms of pi, you simplify a fraction, and you simplify your radicals. Remember that? So, all right, can't write this on transparent background here. So, so that means you simplify a fraction, No decimals, right? Reduce all fractions and radicals to simplest form. Exact means no decimals. And that's where you, you leave your answer in terms of pi. In other words, you don't multiply by pi. You just leave your answer as say two pi, three pi, four pi over three, things like that, okay? Um, and then you were supposed to enter the number answer only. Like I said, that won't be a factor on the test on Thursday because it will be multiple choice. But if you do have a situation, someone in our classroom just said, you know, hey, I entered X equals something. I tried to go through and catch all those, but if you did get the right answer and you just put X equals or you put units, that's fine. It, we're not going to take off for that. Um, I just may not have caught it yet. On, like I tried to get back and catch all those things. Okay, so as I go through these, uh, sorry. Ah, back to my, not liking me changing here. Okay. Um, so this is, these are actually good review problems for what will be on Thursday's test. So on these types of problems, the chord, chord problems, remember what you wanna do is identify the type of problem that it is. You can still use your notes on um, the test on Thursday. So you'll wanna have your, your notes all organized. And this is asking us to solve for the length on this piece right here, right? X. So how do I set that up? 
Remember? I'm going to say, okay, it's a chord chord problem. Do you remember what the rule is for that? Get the piece times the piece equals the piece times the piece. Or we said um, A times B equals C times D. So we're going to set that up 12 times X. equal to 18 times 14. So what do you get for that? You guys looking at your tests? A bunch of them, a bunch of you guys got this right. Yep. Okay, so you should get 21. Right? And in the box, you should have just written 21. If you put x equals 21, it marked it wrong. Hopefully you got it. Okay, that was um, pretty well, we did pretty well on that one. Oops. Sorry, guys. It's hard to do this because it won't let me write on my. Okay, now this one. Same problem, but we missed it. Why'd we miss it? What do you think? It's just harder math, right? Harder algebra. It's the same setup. So it's still a chord chord problem. So how am I going to set that up? Piece times the piece equals the piece times the piece, right? So on this one, remember we said anytime we have a binomial, you want to write those in parentheses. Why do I want to do that? Because what happens when I multiply these? If I don't put those in parentheses there, I'm going to just totally mess up multiplying those. So when I multiply these, remember I have to foil it out. So I get negative 7x, negative 2x, plus 14 equals 36. How do I solve that? What do I do next? That's exactly right. I have to subtract 36 over to the other side and set everything equal to zero. Because I have to factor this, right? So I'm going to subtract 36. Subtract 36, do I get negative 22? Right? So now I'm going to factor it. What happens when I factor it? I need two numbers that multiply together to give me 22 and add up in the middle term to give me 9. What did you do? Yeah, negative 11 and positive 2, outstanding. Okay, so I get two numbers for this. So this would simplify, so I would get two answers, x equals 11 or and or x equals negative 2. Does negative 2 work in this problem? No. Why? Because I can't have a negative, you can't have a negative distance. That's exactly right. 11 works, right? 11 is fine. And by work, I mean you want to plug it back into your equation here, into the initial drawing. If you get a negative number for the length of your chord or any part of your circle, that number doesn't work. So you should just get one answer there, which is 11. Okay, and it says solve for x, so I don't have to back in and get anything else. Okay. All right. Um, did somebody just raise their hand? It, like, let's see. Yeah, I raised my hand. Yeah, go for it. Question. Uh, on number eight, um, I put four dot negative four. I don't know how, but I meant a comma there. Okay. So thank you, I'll, and I'll fix that. If that's what you put, okay. that's okay. I'll, I can I I can go with that. Okay. Um, okay. So moving right along. 
That was number two. All right, so number three, how do I set this one up? You remember? You remember? Yeah. All right, so this is a secant secant, right? So if we're doing our strategy of writing everything down, secant secant, then that would be the outside times the whole. the outside times the whole, right? So we, we can get the whole part by adding it together. So we got six times 10 equals five. And again, you gotta put that in parentheses, the binomial, or we're gonna screw it up when we multiply, right? So we get 60 equals five X plus 25. Now what do I get? Can I subtract? Oops. Can I subtract sixty? I do. Uh, what should we do? I should be going the other way, shouldn't I? Go this way. Sorry. So x equals seven. Okay. Okay, um, and that one we did fairly well on that actually. So move on to the next one. Um, this one, same type of problem, but this one you're going to end up factoring, right? Because I'm going to get. Does anybody need me to work this one out? You're going to get x times x plus two is equal to three times eight. We need to do that one. Set it up. Anybody need me to finish that one out, or can, should we go on to the the other type of problems? Okay, I'm going to keep going. Okay, this, um, let's just set this one up because this one's a little different. This is a secant tangent. So do you remember what the rule is for this one? Secant is always going to be what? Outside times the whole, right? So secant is going to be outside times the whole. And what do I do with the, the tangent part? Square. Square it. That's exactly right. Okay. And then when you make sure you distribute, what do we get for 15 squared? 225. You should just get 16. Okay, so I think if you miss those, it's just setting up the problem in the first place. If you put your um, binomials in parentheses, that really helps keep you from making mistakes on just multiplying things out and doing the algebra. All right, so let's get to some that um, were more missed problems. So, aha, this one. Missed a ton. All right, I think there's two reasons we missed this one. But if I set this up, it's the same problem as the last one. <clears throat> so secant sec or secant tangent. This is already giving you the whole part. And I think that's what screwed up some people. So when you set this up, it's just x times 12 is equal to 6 squared. 12x equals 36. So I think if you if you look back at your notes and if um, if you kept your work, 
if you did x times x plus 12, you just made it a lot harder. You see how it's showing you that this is 12 goes into there. All right, so don't make it harder than it is. Okay, moving on, we're gonna keep going here. Okay, um, that's a party hat problem. We did well on that problem. You just set that equal to each other and solve for X. Same thing here. We set that equal to each other and solve for X. But what happened, what's the difference between this one and the one right before it? What should we get for this one? This is the one somebody just said about how they entered their answer. Right, so I know this is congruent to that, the party hats. I know those are always congruent. So how do I solve this? <clears throat> what happens there? Okay, four works. What about negative four? All right, well, when I plug negative four in here, what happens? So I get 16 minus two equals 14. So that's okay, right? So they both work. So you would put four comma negative four, write four and negative four, or four space negative four, or even four dot negative four, we'll take that. Just, you gotta have both numbers there. Okay, so always be careful about checking your answers. Sometimes they work, and especially on these problems, you know, there's only an X squared in the problem. There's no X by itself. So if you only see X squared in the problem, chances are you might get two answers because that's when the negative can work. Because when you square the negative, you're going to get a positive. Yeah. Um, well, if you put it in your calculator, if you take negative four, the question was, why did I put it in parentheses? If you square a negative number, you will always get a positive number, right? So we know we should know that. So we should be able to say negative four squared and do that in our head and get 16. If you type this in your calculator and you do it like that, what do you get? You should try it because you get negative 16. Because your calculator isn't following order of operations. It's going to say the opposite of four squared. That's what it's thinking. So if you ever do this in your calculator, which like I said, hopefully we don't have to do that in our calculator. But if you do, think of it in terms of like always put it in parentheses if it's a negative. And then the calculator will do it correctly. Okay. All right. So, moving on. Okay, this is where we kind of started to fall apart. All right, find the length of the arc AB. So, remember we have all these formulas about arc length and um, arc length and circumference. So, let's just review those really fast here before we do these problems. So, we have the area of a circle. That one, remember? I r squared, you have circumference of a circle. What's that one? You can use your formulas, look at your notes. Two pi r or pi times the diameter, right? So remember, area is measuring like the inside of your pizza. We talked about it being like a pizza. So the area is the whole inside of the circle, what you can eat of your pizza. The circumference would be the measurement of the perimeter of your circle or the crust on your pizza, right? Circumference is a measurement of length. So when we're doing these arc length, and sector area formulas, it's all the same basic formula. It just depends if you're looking for the length of your arc 
or the area, the area of the sector that's defined by the R. So on this particular problem, it wants R length. Remember how we found that? You took the circumference times, and then you have a formula that you can use in your notes. You're basically saying the circumference times the fraction of the circle that you're working with. The fraction of the circle you get from the degree of the arc over the degrees of everything in this whole circle, right? So theta here is the arc measure in degrees divided by 360 is the whole circle. So circumference is just, I'm just going to use 2 pi r and put that into my circumference formula. Okay, so if I go back and I get, do the problem here that we're talking about, the length of arc AB. So all that it wants is the arc length. Oops. Too much technology going on here. All right, so I want the length of arc AB. So I'm going to use my arc length formula. Which is the circumference times theta in degrees all over 360. Okay. So when I set this up, I need to get the circumference is 2 pi r. This would simplify to one sixth. That becomes 36. So if I keep going and I keep simplifying, this becomes six pi. And I'm not supposed to enter yards, like units, anything like that. And I'm supposed to leave my answer as an exact answer in terms of pi, unless. I'm told to round. So it doesn't say anything about round here. So that would be my answer. Six pi. That's it. Okay, that was one of the most missed problems right here. You can't, okay, someone said, well, I left pi off all the problems because it says don't include units. Pi is not a unit, it's a number. Remember? Don't you remember like we had we missed pi day the other day. We were just talking about that. But remember, pi is a number that represents 3.14 and it goes on, blah, 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 forever. So don't leave pi off. That's part of the calculation, right? It's just if it's an exact answer, you leave pi in your answer. So that's what it means when it says leave your answer in terms of pi. Okay, I will go back and check that. Thank you. Um, okay, next one, let's see. Okay, again, length of AB, so try this one. Now this one's 90 degrees, so that's one fourth of the circle, right? But if we do length of AB, again, it doesn't say round, so I'm gonna do arc length is equal to the circumference that's the radius, right? So 2 times the radius times pi. 2 times 30 is 60. So it's 60 pi times 90 degrees over 360. So that simplifies to 1 fourth. So what happens if I take 60 and divide it by 4? What should I get? Fifteen pi. Fifteen pi. That's the answer. Okay. So if you miss those, chances are you probably had a decimal answer there, or um, left off the pi, something like that. So same exact problem, right? I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do that one because we'll run out of time. Okay, so twelve word problem. 
A circle has a radius of 15 inches. Find the length of the minor arc that is formed by the central angle me measuring 37 degrees. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Now I can round, okay? So on this one, I list all my stuff over here. So radius is 15, angle is 37 degrees. I'm still just finding the arc length, right? Arc length is the circumference of 2 pi r times 37 degrees over 360. So what happens when I do that? I'm going to round, so I can go ahead and put that in my calculator. So I'm going to say 30 times the pi button on my calculator. I should get 94.247 for that first part times 37 divided by 360. And I get 9.6865, but it says round to the nearest tenth. So I got 9.6865. So I'm just gonna round to the nearest tenth. So I should get what? 9.7? And you, it would be 9.7 inches, but I didn't have to put the units in my calculator. Okay. All right, 13 now, we're doing the exact area. So some people miss this because they found arc length. Well, area now, you're looking for the whole slice of the pizza, right? It's the same formula. So the area of a sector Instead of using the circumference, I'm going to use the area of the circle times oops, theta over 360. So first, let's find the area of the circle, which is pi r squared, right? So I'm going to say 16 squared times pi times 45 over 360. So if I say 16 squared, 256, it ends up with 32 pi, once it all simplifies out, okay? And again, that would be an exact answer because it doesn't tell me to round. All right, so how are we doing? Do you see what we missed? A lot of these are going to be the exact same way. So I'm not going to do every single one of these problems, right? So 14, same exact thing again. So again, it wants area, exact area. Oh, okay. All right. So I'll go check on that one. Um, exact area, again. So a lot of these problems repeated. So again, if you mess up, um, it would, it would kind of, if you did the same thing and didn't put exact answers, it kind of messed you up on a lot. All right, so these word problems, you just have to know, am I looking for area or if I, am I looking for length? So the security cam camera, whoop, security camera at Walmart is set to view over a distance of 20 feet and rotate through an angle of 110. And then they give you a problem, you know, the drawing here. So the radius is 20 feet and the angle is 110 degrees. What is the approximate area of the camera's view? Round your answer to the nearest square foot and we put their whole number. Okay, so am I going to do area of a sector or arc length? Which one? Area of a sector, right? So I'm going to find area of a sector is the area of the circle times the theta over 360. So this one lets me round. So the area is pi r squared. So I'm going to say 20 squared pi times 110 over 360. I'm going to do this in my calculator. 20 squared is 400 times 110 divided by 360 
is 122.222222 forever times pi. So times pi. I get 383. And then if I round to the nearest whole number, that's going to go to 380. Okay. Okay. A lot of people miss that one. I think sometimes we panic about word problems, but all the words, you just, you know, maybe read it out loud to yourself if you're looking at it or just circle like I did here. I know it's, it's online. You can't really circle online, but um, actually on Thursday's test, it will be on CTLS and they have, you know, you have those highlighting tools you can use. So you really can highlight the words that, that are important. But on your scratch paper, you can be writing down the keywords that, that matter. Um, okay, this is number 17 was also one of the most missed problems. And this is one of the ones that we did. This is exactly from the notes. I mean, it's the exact problem, right? So on this one, I need to find the exact area of the shaded part of the figure. So remember, we came up with strategies how to do this. And we said, okay, I want to find the area of the shaded part. of the donut, right? And we said that could be the area of the big circle minus the area of the oops, small circle. And so if I can find the area of each circle, then I'm good to go. Well, so the hard part here is you have to find the area or the radius of the big circle. This part's three, that part's five. So what's the radius of the whole thing? Eight, right? So I would say the area of the big circle is eight squared pi minus the area of the little circle. So what do we get? 64 pi minus nine pi. What does that give us? 55. Can I just put 55? Hi. Hi, there we go. See, you guys are going to be great on Thursday. If you get this now and you just kind of had a mind blip the other day, that's awesome. If you're still confused, we got to do some more review, okay? Um, okay, let's see. And that last one, um, we, did, we did one exactly like this on the... Um, the notes too. So if you go back and look at that same problem, remember you find the area of the rectangle and subtract the area of those three circles. And we did one like this too. This one is circumference, 19 is circumference. So, okay, I realize we're totally out of time. 20, I did that exact problem on the notes also. So if you look at those last few problems and you go back to the class notes on area and perimeter, you'll see those exact problems worked out. All right, you guys have a great day. Don't forget, go to homeroom, okay? Hey, uh, can I talk to you right before I leave? Yeah. Okay, so I know this is crazy, but I forgot to take the test or the quiz this weekend, even though it was open for like three days or something. Um, <laughs> Let me... I was trying to prepare for the test that you would here, get this. I was trying to prepare for the test, right? Yeah. And I forgot to take it itself. Anyway. So, so. Um, let me, can, will you check your, bye, you guys. Have a great day. If you if you have Ms. McClarty's homeroom, you can stay in here because she's in here. Um, so, Devin, will you check your email in like 30 minutes? Let me just check with the other teachers and make sure they didn't open up the quiz already. Okay. And then I'll open it for you to take, you have to take it today during lunch though, okay? So by the end of the day? Um, I can do that. I have lunch third far? period, so. Okay, perfect. All right, so I think that'll work. I just need to make sure that they didn't give it out already. Okay. Okay, you guys go to homeroom. Alex, Kate, are you guys there? You need to go to homeroom, don't forget.